Welcome to a new video guys. I'm just in the milking parlor here. I just started milking group two. So that means we're about halfway done milking. And group two mostly consists of first lactation cows, which means they've only had one calf in their lifetime. We try to keep them all in one group so that they don't get bullied by the older cows. So group one consists of older cows that are second lactation and higher and group two consists mostly of first time calving cows. We do that because our first lactation heifers still have a little bit of growing, a little bit of filling out to do, so they're not as strong as the cows and sometimes older cows can be pretty mean, so we just find it better for the heifers that are coming in to have their own group and we find that they do really well that way. So I'm kind of in a lull here in the milking parlor waiting on a couple slow ones to finish and I just want to show you guys what these yellow bands mean and this means that the cow wearing it is a three-teater. So this cow, number 65, she's a right rear uh, three-teater which means that her right rear is not in working order right now. So sometimes cows will come in and they'll have three working quarters right off the bat. So we'll call that like a dead quarter. And that's just a quarter that's never worked. Could be just a genetic issue from back in the lines or it could be that their quarters were sucked on as a calf, which can also create a dead quarter. It can also be because of teat damage. So sometimes you've got cows that are laying in the bed and then there's another cow that wants that spot specifically. And then they'll sort of like, you know, step in the bed, shove them around, and sometimes they'll step on a teat, which is really unfortunate because it looks really painful. Sometimes it can be them falling down for whatever reason and then their teat gets damaged that way or they can get really bad mastitis and then you have to draw off a quarter that way. We don't have too many cases like that. If we have to dry off a quarter, it's usually because they somehow damage the teat. So 65 over there, she had a scab right on the teat end where the opening is that the milk comes out of. So that makes it really, really difficult for the milk to come out. And at one point it took us about 20 minutes to milk her out. So that causes a lot of stress on the other three quarters for her specifically. So we just decided to dry that quarter off. Now a cow that has damaged her teat after it's healed can still be in good working order for her next lactation. So we're just milking her as a three teeter for this lactation. And then when she has her baby, we'll check that quarter and hopefully it'll be working again so then she'll just be a normal four-quarter cow again. 
So you can see the difference here. And it's, it's not hard or anything, but this teeth end was damaged. It looks pretty good now, so she should be able to milk normally for next lactation. But yeah, that's just what those yellow bands mean. So there we are, just finished pressure washing the basement here. It's really clean and not slippery. So we're doing DHI tomorrow morning, in which case it's always really important for us to make sure that this basement floor is super clean and safe to walk on because we don't want any sort of slipping happening because the concrete floor is pretty hard and falling on it is not a whole lot of fun, but we still have to put up a couple of uh, DHI things like these and this. They need to be rinsed out a bit yet. But DHI stands for Dairy Herd Improvement and using that, we can see what the components of a specific cow's milk are. So you can test for protein, you can test for fat, you basically keep track of how many liters of milk she produces per milking on average. And you can test for somatic cell count as well. So we do this like every five or so weeks. And I have some information on my phone because there's no way that I can remember all of it. <laughs> off the top of my head like I can the cow's names. DHI also gives us a somatic cell count hot list, which is a list of cows that have a higher somatic cell count, which can tip us off actually to be able to figure out which ones are more liable to get mastitis. And the ones that are really bad and really high but don't have mastitis yet, we typically milk them out regardless just because we don't want somatic cell count going too high into our bulk tank because we can actually get penalized for that. So it's really important that we take these milk tests from each individual cow just to monitor how each cow is doing at the molecular level. So that's why we do DHI tests so that we can make sure that we have a great milk product being brought off the farm. So it's actually the next day. We finished DHI this morning and everything went really well. It was really cool because we sample each and every cow individually so they get put into these little plastic pop-off containers and we put, or the DHI lady, she puts a little orange pill in there so that it preserves the milk and keeps it fresh until it gets to the lab where it'll get tested. So. It's pretty cool, so sometimes the milk turns a little bit orange in those little containers. <laughs> the first time I saw that, I was like, what is wrong with our cows? But then it got explained to me and it made a lot more sense. But I'm here in the goat barn again with Miss Payette here. She is still pregnant. <laughs> and she's very round. I cannot believe how big she is. 
There has to be three in there. That's her baking soda. Because she was actually a little bit bloated yesterday. So I had to help her out there. And the babies were okay because I was massaging her belly a little bit and I could feel them moving around and I could actually see them moving. So she's good. She's a little uncomfortable. Uh, and she's just continuously uncomfortable at this point just because she's so pregnant. But she's eating and enjoying life, so she's doing good. Anxiously awaiting her babies. <laughs> and these little ones are doing really great too. They all finally have names. <laughs> oh, this one that's being a little bit naughty jumping on Bella is Bliss. And then her sister on the other side over there is Blossom. Yes, I know, Mama. You're the only one that can get attention. <laughs> so, Bella has Bliss and Blossom. You look at how round she is. Unbelievable. I hope she has them soon, because I don't think she can get much bigger. <laughs> and then over here for Roxy's babies, we have Rookie and Rascal. So they're all named, finally. <laughs> These two are so unbelievably affectionate. I don't know what it is, but they're a lot faster to warm up than the other two were. They're so curious and so <laughs> sweet. Are you trying to eat my finger? <laughs> what are you doing, Rascal? She definitely suits her name. She's the most rambunctious little thing. And always into everything. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can only imagine the amount of hours that my mom and my sister and I spend in here with these little guys because they are just... They're so stinking cute. <laughs> You know, it might be camel, but it's not for eating. They're not real leaves. guys we're anxiously awaiting Payette and her babies but in the meantime we don't mind spending time with these little rugrats hey <laughs> but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did please like and subscribe and share with a friend and I will see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>